finally did it. I genuinely forgot how this felt like. I genuinely forgot how it was to have a striker that performs well in a game that scores a banger. I mean, I don't even know where to start. I'm so happy. I didn't expect for this to happen. Uh, what, what are your instant thoughts? Well, we finally got a dub, two dubs for the two goals. Yeah, I don't know. That, that performance was very, very good. Like, I don't even know. I don't even know how to, like, explain it, like, in one word or in one sentence. But just, like, that was the first time Mexico has scored more than one goal on the U.S. since 2021, I think, when we played them in the Nations League. There's been, like, we, I don't know how many times in a row that they shut us out. So just for us to score two, and both goals were very, very good. And we shut them out? Yeah, it was absolutely amazing. Oh, a fun fact about that. Cesar Montes and Johan Vasquez have played the U.S. twice in Mexico. Shut them out both times. One time in a World Cup qualifier, and again yesterday. So defense was great. Defense was solid. The midfield was surprisingly not that bad. I thought when I saw the initial starting lineup, I'm like, this team is so damn slow. Like, we have, I know we have Guardado. He deserved his 18 minutes. And then we had Edson, and then, and then we brought in Romo. I'm like, bro, this team's going to get cooked. But no, nah, they, they held their own. But obviously, I mean, the talking point, bro, is Raul Jimenez. Raul Jimenez balled out. I thought it was going to be one of those cases where, like, yes, he's balling out for Fulham, kind of like how Santi was balling out for Feyenoord. But it wouldn't translate to the national team because we weren't really producing anything for our strikers. And I don't know why, but none of our strikers have been performing at all. It was the complete opposite. He took the he took over the game. Exactly. Like he showed that like now his confidence does translate to the national team. Like I never even see him kick free kicks. I'm not even joking you. I've never even seen that. And it just like, slotted it in top corner. Absolute money. And then like his his link up play. Then he does like a Rabona cross that almost like ended up in a very good chance. And then he he hustles. Steals the ball off Ream that leads to an assist for Chino. I'm like, bro, this guy contributed to pretty much almost everything we did well. I'm like, for me, Raul Jimenez solidified his starting spot for November for the Nations League, which is very important because it is now confirmed. It's a Nations League quarterfinal against Honduras, just like last time, a home and away playoff. We know how much we struggled last time against Honduras. They took us all the way to penalties. But I think Raul Jimenez solidified his starting spot. I wouldn't say past that because Santi will come back. I think Santi will be strong. Uh, will come back stronger. But I wouldn't mind a world. Again, we're talking like in 2025 now. I wouldn't mind a world where both of them start together. Especially in the form that Raul is in and how good Santi has been in his club. I don't think you can afford or Mexico is good enough to bench one of those type of players. But for the time being, Raul earned his spot for, for the November window. More importantly, he uh, he owns the U.S., Vasco Aguirre owns the U.S. Let me give you another stat. El Vasco Aguirre, after the 2002 fracaso, has played the U.S. three times, three Ws. 5-0, 2-1, and then yesterday, 2-0. Happy to see it. I'm very happy, like I said, but that was a long intro. Welcome back to another episode, guys. Like I keep saying every episode. <laughs> I know we the intro yet. Click, yeah. click the no, uh, post notifications to be informed every time we post. Click the Discord link down below to chat with us and make sure to follow on all of our socials. Um, we appreciate all you guys for the support. I think we just hit 5,000 subs in less than like three months since returning to this YouTube channel. I think we've been growing very fast. So shout out to you guys. And yeah, where, where else do I continue? I think, uh, I think the USA took us very lightly. I think Pochettino took us lightly with those subs he made at halftime. Obviously, a lot of the players that had to go back to Europe took us lightly. And now we know, and they should know too, that it's a rivalry game, regardless of you guys playing a C team and B team, like, we whooped you guys, and obviously we're going to be happy about it. What are we supposed to be, sad or mad? I think next time they got to take it more seriously. They got to bring in their best players. So it's a closer game because yesterday the U.S. were terrible. I mean, no shots on target the first half, no creativity. The midfield was – I thought our midfield was going to be slow, but in reality we we played way better in that midfield, a way younger midfield. Yeah, you guys missed a lot of players, but we did too. Like you just said, we didn't have Santi. We didn't have Julian Araujo. We didn't have Quinones. We didn't have Luis Chavez. We didn't have Gerardo Artiaga left back. We started Angulo, a player I do not read at all. And you guys made him look like a class left back yesterday. Honestly, he, you got to give props when it's due, and Angulo was good. And I, I, you brought up a great point. I don't want to hear no like B team, C team nonsense from the U.S. fans because I've been hearing that all week. Because what I've also seen on like Reddit, Twitter, uh, TikTok, YouTube, and Instagram, that, oh, it doesn't matter. Well, we, we can beat Mexico with our B team, with our C team. But then when they lose, it's like, oh, no, it's just our B team. It's like, well, here's a newsflash for you guys. Your A team also isn't very good. Your A team just tied New Zealand last month. 
Your A team just lost to Canada last month. It's not like you guys are anything special. Like, like you guys got your A team got grouped at the Copa America in a group with Panama and Bolivia. Obviously, you guys are a different team, but let's not get it twisted. Like the U.S. turns into Pecho Frios whenever they go and play away. I highly doubt the U.S., especially with how Raúl Jiménez and Mexico played yesterday as a unit. I highly doubt even with their A team players. They would have beat us. Let's not forget. It's not like that's not like Mexico is at full strength either. We're missing Santi Jimenez, arguably one of our top three, easily one of our top three players. Luis Chavez, who's he has, he's kind of like regressed a little bit, but he's been a starter for us for like three years now, like solidified starter. When we have a couple players in, playing in big leagues like Julian Araujo, Alex Padilla, again they're more like in the defense. I don't think the defense needed any adjustments yesterday, but again they play in top leagues. So we were also missing some players. Quinones wasn't there as well. I'm forgetting one. Oh, Marcelo Flores. Another name. Like a bunch of like different options that could have at least came off the bench. Uh, Henry Martin as well. Henry Martin would have subbed in instead of Memo Martinez. And let's be honest, like I don't even rate Henry Martin like that, but he's clearly better than Memo Martinez. So we were also missing like, yes, they're not like at the level of a Pulisic or McKinney or um, Balligan. But for us, like they're key players for us, like at least. So like, we were also we were also weren't at full strength. So I mean you can't really take that away from us. And this is again, this is the US's own fault. Pochettino let Pulisic leave. It's not like Pulisic was injured. He let Pepe leave. It wasn't like Pepe was injured. It's like, all right, you guys can go ahead and go. And again, like the US fans thought they were still gonna beat us because they have like they had Musa who plays in like Serie A, Busio, Tessman who play in Serie A, like a bunch of players who play like in the Pram, Serie A, and all these different leagues. And they got bossed by Liga Mex players. Those are a bunch of mid players, to be honest. I was watching a lot of USMNT content last night after the game. I saw Alexi Lalas' podcast. He was enraged because he also agrees with what I'm saying. Like, it's still a rivalry. He believes they should have taken taken it more seriously because at no point should you ever give Mexico... If I'm in the USA's position, if I keep pouncing, if I keep dominating this team for so many years, I don't want to give them an inch of life. I don't want, I want to continue, like, dominating them. Why are you going to give them, like, this lifeline? Like, for what? Because now we have confidence yet again. And maybe who knows, like the next time we play you guys, we might be you guys again. But I think we also learned that we got to continue playing games in Mexico. I think the atmosphere at the Stadio Acron just felt different. It's like it was like a breath of fresh air, not playing it in these stadiums in the U.S. and Houston, Texas, L.A. Like it's just different vibes. Yeah. And uh, I also agree we need to start playing in Mexico and stop playing Charlie Rodriguez. You see what happens when you play Charlie Rodriguez, you don't even beat Valencia. You don't even beat Valencia's C team. And he was mainly at fault for that. But when you don't play him, you're out there beating the U.S. I really hope, again, this is like the every video segment of Charlie Rodriguez where we dedicate 30, 30 seconds to a minute and where we just bash him. And he deserves it. And uh, this, is the, this is that section. I really hope this is the, the last time we ever see him because Mexico without him looked perfectly fine, bro. Like, trust me, the world will be perfectly fine if Charlie Rodriguez doesn't play another second for the national team. You just saw it yesterday. All the midfielders that play, even Guardado, looked like he was capable more than Chadli. And Guardado was like, what, 142 years old? Like, <laughs> and, and even Obed Vargas came in, looked looked decent, had a little cameo. I'm really kind of surprised, though, that he actually played over uh, Marcel Ruiz. Yep. Marcel Ruiz has been balling at an even higher level in a harder league uh, for years, and he's older. So that kind of surprised me that he didn't play. But I'm not really going to focus on the negatives right now. But again, I think there was a lot of players that showed that in these last two windows, they do not belong. And some that do belong, some that like up their game, up their stock and others that didn't. And I really hope that Vasco realizes that when we, as we head into Nations League next month. Because uh, again, I don't think Honduras is going to be easy. It never is easy as, as bad as Honduras is, as good as we are, or as bad as we are, as good as they are. It doesn't really matter. It's always going to be a battle. So I think... Um, these two windows, these first two windows under the Vasco, what is that now? Undefeated, right? Undefeated in, in, in four games? Yeah. And with three clean sheets, that's not bad. I'll take it. And beating your rivals for the first time in five years, I'll take exactly. it. Exactly. Um, to end this episode, let's go, go through a quick run-through of player ratings. So a quick uh, number and explanation for each player. So starting off in net, Malagón. Didn't have much to do, so you can't really do no wrong. Six and a half. Same. He was he was bored first half. It didn't get any shots off him. Uh, Jorge Sanchez. If you're a defender and I don't even really notice you, you're probably doing something okay. So I'm not even gonna bash you. I think you got like a six. Like I, he doesn't really offer much of the attack, but like I don't, I didn't see him getting beat or anything. Yeah, if Pulisic was playing, he probably would have had a bad game, but thankfully he didn't play. Uh, Cesar Montes and Johan both in one because they're a single unit to be honest. As a pair, I mean that's like our best pair. I'm gonna give them an eight. Cesar Montes bounced back from a bad game against Valencia. Um, yeah, I'm gonna give him. I'm gonna give him a ten. 
Like, what What did they do bad? Like, a tennis with perfect game. I think they had a perfect game. I've always said Johan, like, plays better than Cesar. I think yesterday Cesar was the main man. I think he was sensational. Yeah, no, they were great. Jesus Angulo, the shocker right here. I'll give him, yeah, I'll give him, like, a seven. He did surprise me. I still don't think he's, like, our best option at left back, but... I mean, you can't really dog it the game he had yesterday, so seven. I'll give him an eight. He surprised me. Uh, Edson Alvarez. Pretty decent. Um, I was going to give him like a seven, but for slapping Zendejas, I'll give him an eight. I agree. <laughs> I'll give him an eight. He really stood out to me because he stuck to his capabilities and attributes, his best attributes, because... When he plays for Mexico, he turns into a midfielder that he's not. He turns into a midfielder that thinks he's good on the ball, like this Regista type of player when he's not. And yesterday, he played like the Edson Alvarez. I like to see at West Ham, at Ajax, like that freaking stopper in the middle of the midfield. And I think he was solid. I gave him an eight as well. I think he really dominated that midfield and no one go through him. Um, Orbelin Pineda, kind of ghost. He was... But yeah, like he just goes through long spells where you don't really notice him. And his only really shot on target, well, it wasn't even on target. His only really shot was wide. I'll give him like a five. Yeah, I give him a five too. I think he was pretty non-existent. Andres Guardado in his last game. I just gotta, you got to give him a 10, right? You got to yeah, give him a 10. Man. He brought experience. He brought stability that we needed. He brought, like, comfortability that, like, allowed Romo to be like, all right, this USA midfield isn't even that good. I can still continue to be bad, like how I always am, and I think we'll be fine. I think Andres Guardado was – he honestly could have played till halftime. I wanted him to play till halftime, but they played him till 18 minutes, 20 seconds, because he has 182 caps. I think that was the case. So I'll give Andres Guardado a 10 as well. Luis Romo, since he technically started the game. I don't think it was horrible. Again, I don't think he like, stood out either. I'll give him like a six and a half. Give him like a five, to be honest. I didn't. He didn't stand out to me. Bioco Alvarado. Probably the only player in the lineup that didn't do good. Like He wasn't really a threat at all. And it's kind of surprising. He's at home. Because it's, it, it's his home stadium. But then again, it's not surprising because it's Bioco. So I give him like a three. Didn't do anything. And he hasn't really done it. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. He's one of the guys that probably has to go. For November, he did nothing in the first window with Aguirre in September. Did nothing this time. I think he. I think his time is done. Like he's, man, he goes with plenty of options. Like Osiel Herrera on the come up. Marcelo Flores still wasn't here. Like I think Vega's better than him. Quinones might come back. Like I think I think Piojo needs to bounce. Yeah, I think he disappointed as well expected. I mean, especially since he's at home. So I'll give him a four. Uh, left wing, Chino Huerta. An eight, good goal. I think felt like felt like it was a constant threat. Pace. Yeah, he just offers something different. Offers some creativity that we need. I think he earned himself him as well a starting spot for November. But yeah, give him an eight as well. And the man of the match, ten point zero. I'm not even gonna ask you. He ran the show as a striker. He had so much confidence. He's doing like Chilena passes, Rabona passes, holding up the ball like if he was prime R nine. The free kick goal, the assist. I mean, what a fucking performance. I agree. I agree. Couldn't uh, couldn't have been better than that. But guys, for all you guys watching, let us know in the comments what you guys are feeling. If you guys are Mexico fans, USA fans, any thoughts? We read all the comments. I like seeing you guys' opinions. And yeah, um, I'm very happy. Uh, Mexico won against the US for once. And any last comments? Uh, I don't even know what to say, bro. I'm just still uh, there. Kings of Concacaf. More head-to-head -head wins. More Concacaf <laughs> titles. <laughs> I'm just glad we gave uh, Pochettino his, an L in his first ever Clásico. And it won't fraud. be the last one. I promise you. Be Hot one. take before the episode ends. I don't think he's going to last till the 2026 World Cup. That is odd. Not just, not just because of yesterday. It's just the manager. I know he is. All my rival teams have played against him. He's not that guy. But yes, make sure to click the uh, like button if you guys enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for next week's episode. And we'll catch you guys next time.